Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we're back into Warplane Pacific, and I'm giggly as a schoolgirl because we finally got some transports and we can start moving some units around the map. Uh, we have been completely on the defensive at this point. I mean, I guess we're still on the defensive technically here, but at least we can move some of these units out to improve our defensive situation. Now, I got so excited last time when we got these transports, I already moved some of the Brits about. Uh, now we've got to move the American units and figure out exactly where we want to put them. Um... We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We have already deployed, and so uh, the UK had uh, those transports that deployed. I think we also got another division last time. Um, same with the US. And so the US also got a sub this time, or a sub squadron. Uh, we will start to move that all about. You see that the UK, uh, the British, will get the 70th division next time. They also get this communications intelligence. Now, the Americans got that last turn and we placed it on the map. So we'll go talk about that a little bit this time. Uh, the Brits get some more transports. A lot of transports starting to come in. I like it. Uh, we actually probably even need more, but we'll, we'll get to the build queue soon enough, soon enough. Um, okay, so we deployed. Is there anything else here to deploy? Uh, the Americans get another submarine squadron. I think we built this one, and then another one. I mean, they just keep coming for the Americans. You see all the transports down here, too, and we get some more merchant marines, so on and so forth. We built these anti-air defense last time. Looking back, I kind of wish maybe I would have done this a little sooner. They're fairly cheap, and they give you pretty good uh, AA defense. I'd like to put these... Well, I mean, this is for the Americans, so we're going to put it at Pago and places like that. I wish I could put it in at, like, Moresby. So we may have to um, build these for the Aussies as well. Uh, Soviet Union, yeah, doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to get supply trucks next turn, uh, 10 of them, in China. And the way they work is they're basically on the unit card, the land unit card. And if uh, you have a unit that gets in bad supply situation, you can call them in. They're a one-time use sort of deal. Uh, Australia, the uh, Australians get uh, two divisions in April. So that's very, very helpful. You see it's March 29th, so we'll get this infantry division next time. Uh, the Canadians are just, you know, what, what do Canadians do? They're just hanging out watching ice hockey, uh, hoping the war goes well. I shouldn't say that if you're Canadian. They made an, a tremendous effort. It always amazes me in, like, war in the West, exactly how many troops the Canadians fielded in Europe. Uh, but for whatever reason, the Canadians really, really... Uh, put all of their, you know, 98% of their assets into Western Europe. And so not, not a factor here out in the Pacific, really. India, uh, this is just excellent. We need, now it's not going to be quite next turn. It's going to be the turn after that. Uh, you can call me what? The Lahore Division. And they will go in April 15th. Uh, Kiwis, nothing. Philippines, unbelievably, we're able to build a Filipino unit. I'm actually contemplating taking one of these divisions, we've got several on the U.S. West Coast, as we get these transports and trying to get them up into the Philippines. Now, I never even thought in my wildest dreams, well, that's the home islands of Japan, in my wildest dreams that we would still be holding uh, Luzon at this point. Uh, but we are the northernmost island of the Philippines, and we've got a very strong po position on Mindanao. I mean, we could put another division here, and I'm not so sure they could take Mindanao uh, with three full United States divisions out here. Now, we probably need a commander unit uh, out here somewhere if we are going to make that attempt. Now, the Japanese seem to have just kind of forgotten or given up on the Philippines at this point. They've got this stranded unit out here. It's not getting resupplied. I think we can, it's got a zero. I think we can just destroy it this turn. If that happens, I am going to bring a headquarters unit in here if I can, and maybe another division, because if we can hold the Philippines uh, bully for us. Um, so we've deployed. Let's go look at the combat log. Uh, last time, we had partisan activity in China because, of course, we did. Uh, we had more partisan 
Uh, we had a supply interdiction. Now, what's this? Oh, look at us. <clears throat> I'm like, hey, what happened here? Uh, I did this. I did this. Um, when naval units are within two hexes of a port, you interdict the supply into that port. And that's what we did. Supply convoy attacked at 4435, destroying zero stockpiles by Allied naval forces. Well, that's too bad because we actually then lost a point. And let's go look. He's now down to one of three. We got to get him out of here. Uh, but hey, good job. Good job, bud. You, you tried. You tried. Uh, so we'll have to take this all the way down to Sydney, I believe, unless we want to take it over to Colombo. Maybe actually it's safer to take it to Colombo. But we can't get very far here, right? We've got to go all the way around because the Japanese are sitting right here in this strait and it's not allowing us through. We don't have any other bases, you know, that we need a level five or above to uh, repair. Moresby's a three. Darwin's a two, Townsville's a four. They just don't quite get us there. So it's either uh, out here, it's either Suva or Sydney. And we're going to go back to Sydney. Um, I'm actually surprised Brisbane isn't represented as a little stronger. Uh, Brisbane, you know, in other games is such a major port, but uh, it's only a four here. Uh, and so, okay, it is what it is. Uh, we got to play the game the way it is set up. So we'll bring the pike back here uh, next turn. We'll try to get it into Brisbane to get that uh, repaired. Um, speaking of which, we I think we have a sub down there that's getting repaired. We may be able to uh, pull that out this time. So, okay, this was what, you know, the supply interdiction, the convoy attack. So we did lose a strength point during this interdiction. We also tried to attack the convoys. Nothing really happened there. Uh, land combat. These guys held strong. Uh, George Giffard out here and gentlemen holding strong against the Japanese. They had a plus one, or our defending units had a plus 1.25 because we were entrenched. Um, but, you know, they had two full div divisions attacking here and they took one land loss. We took nothing. We took nothing, uh, so fantastic for us. Uh, ground strike, okay, we're getting bombed. We're getting bombed by the 15th Air Division. Now, gosh darn it, if I had more American air assets, I'd get air up here. They're bombing us from I don't know where exactly. It could be off of a carrier. It could be uh, from either of these two bases. Hell, it could be down here from um, Monado. Uh, this probably maybe is where it's from. Uh, maybe. I don't know. You see here at Tarakan, we've got an unidentified airfield. So maybe this one's it. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. We were getting bombed at Devo. Uh, we're getting bombed at Devo again. It didn't do any strength damage. Um, okay. All right. Well, it means they may be coming there for an invasion. Now, out here, you see where we've put our intelligence unit out at Rabal because I'm very interested what they're doing out here. They've got two task forces of some sort. They've got planes. Uh, what do they have under here? Uh, it's hard to tell. We'll, we'll get there in a minute. Uh, so they did do a ground strike. Where though? Oh, at Moresby. Okay, so that's right. And then now we've moved this American air unit in here uh, to hopefully kind of dissuade that now this is not an air con it's not an air to air unit really it's more of a uh bombing like tactical bombing unit but they do have air to air capability and so hopefully we can fight them off a little bit uh the, when i say them the japanese we've got this on uh priority repairs we'll come back and look at all that in a minute let's go look at the partisan activity out here we had some near Peking, which is where a lot of it happens, uh, Chinese partisans. We had a convoy attack out here. Uh, yes, look at this. We sunk another Japanese sub. So we had nine escorts in this convoy lane, okay? Um, and they got him. They got, they got one of the, ja this Japanese sub has been sending out here harassing us, sub squadron. Uh, and we, we suck it. 
Excellent. So it's kind of two to two right now. They've sunk two of our subs. We've sunk two of their subs. They have done a better job of getting some Merchant Marine hits on us, but uh, we're working on that. We're working on that. Um, yeah, so this was kind of the prelude to the sinking. Uh, fantastic, because the Japanese are going to have a hard time rebuilding a sub fleet. That's for sure. Okay, so we've looked at the combat log. Let's go look at our reports. Uh, you know, we, we kind of know all this. Fleet has low supply. Uh, <clears throat> we'll go deal with that. Uh, this is the, the headliner right here, right up on the top. Uh, the U.S. and the U.K. have added transports. That's just exciting as can be. We continue to try to gain on the Japanese. They obviously have a huge advantage on us. Uh, on the land, uh, in the air, it'll get, keep getting closer and closer, and then eventually I think the U.S. will have just massive amount of air assets. Uh, naval, okay, uh, we're a little behind, but not terribly so. The U.S. continuing to gain there. Merch Marines, uh, all told, we actually have more than the Japanese, right, when you add the U.S. and the U.K. together. Our escorts, those U.K. escorts doing their business this time, we had nine out in that convoy lane, and we have one less Japanese sub because of it. I uh, love it. Uh, casualties. Okay, we could look through that. We may next time. Uh, let's go to type, because I do like to go down and look at uh, unit has a low supply level. Okay. Cornwall. Oh, it's the one that's right out here. Um, we'll come back there. I believe that's the Cornwall. No, that's the extra. Oh, you can see it in yellow. You know, it's got a yellow. Now it's not all of these. We've already put the Cornwall in port. Uh, so we're fine there. Um, uh, let's go back to units and type. So the Cornwall is already in port, so that's nice. Long range subs. Uh, we now have the Bullhead, which is, this is brand new. This just launched, we put it down in San Francisco, I believe. We're gonna move it this time. This one's a little different. It's a 1941 attack submarine. We haven't seen those before, so we'll just go, we'll go check it out. Now the Pike, we know we're moving back to Sydney to get repaired, it's one of three. It looks like the Grayling is now ready in Sydney. Uh, it has been repaired, the Grayling Squadron. So let's unselect everything. That's how I like to do it now. I don't like to go through and click each one. Unselect and then select what you want. I just find it's it's safer uh, that way. Now, I did figure out, we had some questions. I said we. I had some questions. What was the Indonesian convoy line? Well, this is it. It comes into Brisbane, and if we follow it along here, you know, it goes up here into what is modern day um, Indonesia, because I believe Indonesia controls Borneo, uh, this island, right? And so it goes here. This is the Indonesian path from like out here all the way down to Brisbane. So uh, questions asked, questions answered. That's the dojo. Uh, we're going to move this out here on the Indonesian line for this time. Uh, this looks good. Can't be attacked from land. It's more than one hex away from any land. And it's just going to sit right here, hopefully uh, very quietly. Uh, but we're going to sit in this lane just in case the Japanese got some stuff going on into this Indonesian lane. I guess it's possible, right? Uh, they could be using it. Now, you know, if they are putting things into the Indonesian lane here, it's still my understanding we're in the Indonesian lane. We could still attack it, you know, as some kind of like abstraction, right? Uh, reports. Let's go back to our units. Um, let's see. Long range pike. We've got the bullhead. We're going to go look at that. And everything else... Looks pretty good. You see all these Chinese units that they've got a lot of strength points, but they've lost a lot of strength points to Nomaya Defense Force. We have this on uh, priority repairs. I guess I didn't look for that when I was going down here. Eighth Brigade uh, of the New Zealanders. Um, as we go out, you know, as we do every time, I go out and look at every counter anyway. Third Army Group. Yeah, that needs it, right? It's five of 30. Uh, so we are trying to give that a little priority. Uh, this tactical group, 5 of 20 uh, naval air uh, for uh, New Zealand. We've got that on priority. First RAAF. It's now up to 13 of 20. I believe... Well, we'll go look for that. Um, okay, 
all good, all good on the reports. Let's look at the war panel. How are we doing? UK's got 80 victory points now. US sitting with just 40. Okay. Uh, we've almost got enough for another uh, intelligence unit, but I think this time I'm going to let it build and try to rework our own encryption codes. Either do that or try to break the Japanese encryption codes. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, okay, I don't think there's really much else to do on the war panel report this time. Uh, advancements, do we have any more research centers? I don't believe so. I think we already kind of looked at that. Nope. Uh, we do have, you know, the Chinese just grinding away, trying to get it to 1940 land units, uh, both assault anti-tank. Anti now, you know, you may say, well, all of those units we have out there are anti-tank, I think, aren't they? Or a lot of them are anyway. Yeah, they are, but there's really nothing else for the Chinese to build. And so, you know, eventually, if that war turns a little bit, we may crank out a couple of assault units. Um, so that I, I'm just doing everything on the land. I mean, that's really what the Chinese need. We could do some breakthrough heavy armor potentially, but it's a little too expensive for them. Uh, the U.S. Uh, continues on. We will have these long-range subs. We'll have them up to a 1942 level, and then the game will automatically upgrade the units it thinks should upgrade. Uh, but you see here, you know, 87 more days, and that will happen. Uh, you see we're really focusing on air-to-air -air combat interceptors, and we're uh, also doing naval training and carrier operations. Those are our main ones. Uh, we are doing land units, the assault land units, so don't get me wrong. We do have, you know, we're researching some stuff on the land, uh, but the more, you know, kind of advanced kind of stuff, uh, naval air carrier operations, that's what I really want to focus on. For the UK, we're building defensive units, anti-tank uh, on the ground units. Um, they're also looking into some heavy armor. I maybe should do the Americans. You know, we've got breakthrough on a level three. We'll see when we pop up here on lang long range sub or something else. Uh, maybe carrier operations because we'll be all the way. Well, that's very important though. We'll see. We'll see when we get there. No decisions have to be made this turn. Um, We've got the uh, UK doing anti-sub, large warships, naval air, strategic bombing, just a little bit of that. I may even crank that all the way down because it's really going to be the US doing a lot of that. Uh, escort fighters and interceptors, again, a lot of air-to-air -air kind of stuff uh, is what I'm trying to focus on uh, to get air superiority if we can. All right, that's advancements. How's our convoy uh, lanes looking? Well, they're looking pretty dang good after we um, sunk that Japanese sub out here in the Indian Ocean. Uh, we had nine of nine going out there. We, you know, could use a tenth to make it sort of ironclad, uh, if you will, as we've got in the South Pacific. Uh, but yeah, nine of nine out here. So, you know, they sunk us up. Uh, way to go, boys. Way to go. Uh, UK, we're, you know, we're continuing to try to stockpile more oil uh, because, you know, the UK just don't, doesn't have a lot of oil production. Uh, they just don't. And so that, you know, sending it off somewhere else doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, they're at 122 this time for production in the stockpile. So we certainly could uh, build another unit, uh, an infantry unit if we want. We may build some more transports. We shall see. Uh, the United States of America has 280. Okay, not enough to build a uh, fighter unit or any air unit. Definitely enough to build, you know, more subs if we want, a couple of infantry units, more transports. We'll see. Uh, the stockpile is moving up a little bit in oil, even though we are sending some of it off uh, to Australia. We'll look at that this time. Uh, hopefully this will get bumped up soon. It says in the manual, and I just can't remember, I feel like it's April or May of 42. The U.S. goes up another level in oil production, but I just can't remember exactly the date. Uh, Soviet Union really got a lot of oil, and that's doing us absolutely no good. You see this time China has got a lot of production and a decent amount of oil. I mean, hell, they're running ahead of the UK on production right now. I mean, of course, they've been stockpiling it, but we will be building a new army for the Chinese this time. 
Uh, okay, speaking of the build queue, here we go. 122, 39, 112. This all looks fine. Uh, although, you know, they've only got 113 logistics left. It's not a huge deal when you can build an infantry division with only 10, but you know, it's 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 something because when you look at the U.S., the U.S. has over 3,000 in logistics left. Now, this is like a countdown, right? So the U.S. has the capability of 4,300. We're already using like a little over 1,200 of it um, with 3,000 left. Uh, our shipyards are also pretty stocked up. We have 600 in capacity. We're using all but 51 of it. Our comment production. Uh, we, hey, we got a specialty last time, and we put that on the Yorktown, some anti-air on the Yorktown. Uh, we've got reinforcement and upgrades at 78. We used 77 of that last time. 11 on the oil upkeep. We uh, did throw some more manpower in there. Uh, we're plenty fine on manpower, not a big deal. We'll come back to all that. We'll build at the end. Um, okay, let's get down here. It's still raining out here in the Pacific. This is like the rainiest... A map I've ever seen. I think it's been raining here since Pearl Harbor. Uh, it's been double rain sometimes. Now it's single rain, uh, but it has definitely been a defender's delight out here weather-wise. So, yeah, you got to love the rain when you are on the defensive, and we certainly have been on the defensive. Uh, let's get down in here at San Diego and see what's a good morning, San Diego. Uh, w these Marines just don't build up. I don't know. They're just sitting here at 5 of 15, turn after turn. I, I don't really care to put them on priority. Now, you see San Diego. Um, we could, quote, unquote, redeploy anti-air guns here. So we have anti-air guns. Now, where do we see that? Do I see it here? Um, in use, transports, landing ships, supply oilers. No, we don't see it there. Uh, I'm curious. So this is called a redeployment. So we already have anti-air guns somewhere else. And the game is saying we could redeploy them here. Uh, okay, well, we may use that to our advantage out on Pago Pago or something. I don't think we really need anti-air guns here, but I would like to know where they're coming from. Uh, we've got this strategic group out here. It's on 10 strength. We may want to move it now before it builds up anymore because uh, it's only got 10 strength. It only would take one group of transports of 10. Um, and so we may put this on a transport ASAP and try to at least get it out to Hawaii, maybe even on to Pago Pago or Suva or someplace like that. Uh, I think we've got air on Suva, so we probably couldn't do that, but we can maybe take it to Australia even. Uh, infantry division up here. Okay, so there's nothing to really do here at San Diego until we can move that air unit. Uh, infantry division here at LA, the 40th. It is now built up into a 6 of 10, not quite, uh, you know, where we need it to be to ship it out. Uh, the ones up in San Francisco actually are uh, fully 10 of 10, each one that we broke off there. So we're going to send them out first. Uh, six of 10. Okay, that all that's fine. Um, we've got the Hornet. Oh, yes. Now, how did I not mention this? We've got a brand new carrier, spanking new, spanking new. Oh, I do want to, before I do anything else, let's just move this uh, this unit, a brand new division, infantry division, up into Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara uh, is a supply source. It's got a nine. So let's put it there so we're not wasting any supply trying to get trucks out here. It's like one third of their oil use. I say waste supply. It's, it's actually oil. Now, they, it says they don't use any, but my understanding is is that all U.S. units are partially motorized. So I, I think it would use some, it, it, you know, ultimately, let's just put it there. It doesn't hurt and it may help. How about that? Um, yes, the Hornet. We have got a brand new carrier. Do, 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 do. Uh, <laughs> well, I, okay, I won't do that again. I apologize. Um, where are we going to put this carrier and destroyer group? Well, that's a great question. Uh, let's actually go look at the Hornet. What do we got here? Carrier operations 42, looking good. We've got six carrier planes, or six groups of carrier planes on here. Uh, air combat five, tactical four, two 
Look at that naval air of 10. That's just beautiful. Uh, yeah, it does everything pretty well. And we're looking for 1943 in our advancements. We're working towards it. It will get even better. As a matter of fact, let's look at carrier operations, what they get when they go to 43. They get another air combat. So I think that'll take it to a 6. Um, then they get a surface. They get another anti-sub. Hey, that's nice. Okay. Now, this is cumulative, right? When you're looking at this, it's, like, it's not like you get two new points every time. This is showing you the cumulative advancement. So when we go to 43, we go from a 1 to a 2, okay? Right now, it's showing... Oh, that's UK. I'm sorry. Let's go to the US. There we go. US is on 42. It shows you that. We're in 1942 uh, era of carrier operations when we go to 43 it's the same for the u.s the same things we just looked at it goes from a one to a two that's cumulative just remember that um okay well what the heck do we want to do with this new carrier um we could take it out to suva so that we're three strong there we could take it to pearl so that we're two strong uh i mean no actually three strong in pearl let's do that to begin with all right so we'll have a third you see the three there we've got three carriers and we'll just click on here we've now got three carrier groups a bunch of battleships cruisers destroyer you know we got it all out here um i like to have them bunched together we've now got them in two groups if we go and look at deployment for the u.s i do believe it's a while before we get another carrier yeah well i say a while not really the wasp comes out in june and that's really when we'll probably start thinking about going on the offensive a little bit when we've got three and three because we'll put that one in at that group at suva and all of a sudden we've got two groups of three carriers now we may sail them right next to each other we'll see how that all plays out but yeah we'll get another carrier here in june uh, I actually thought it was a lot longer than that, but I think after the Wasp, maybe there's a big gap. Maybe that's it. Uh, the Essex doesn't come on until December. Okay, then we get a light carrier, the Independence. We get the Lexington II. Holy moly, look at all this carrier action. I, I don't see a reason why we would ever build a carrier ourselves, like spend the money, um, because we just get... Um, a ridiculous amount of carriers right so uh, eventually eventually but we'll be three and three by june and i think that's when we'll start planning maybe going on the offensive a little bit uh this air group is 20 of 20 this tactical group i would definitely like to get it out of here but we need more transports uh we talked about the boys in santa barbara what a place to be stationed that's very close to the dojo um u.s 24th division Okay, I was just taking a peek. It's new. Uh, Morrow Bay. Uh, we do need to get a headquarters out, you know, at least to Pearl Harbor, I think. Uh, and so we'll go about that. I say out, but we couldn't put it in Pearl, but we could put it in the uh, hex next to Pearl, right? So we'll get that out there soon enough. But speaking of new units, we've got the bullhead now this is an attack submarine we haven't really looked at these yet or we haven't had one yet so surface it's two defense is eight range is three oil use is one so it will be chugging chugging some oil uh but that's okay uh this is what you want we're gonna go put this so we're gonna you know go ahead and select it we're gonna try to take this out by the japanese home islands again uh, and try to do this this whole jazz. Uh, it's got five days of supply, which isn't fantastic. So, you know, I think what we're going to do is we'll put it in Pearl Harbor so it starts fresh. Okay, so I've now put it in Pearl, and, it, you know, then we'll take it from there on. We may put it out here near some of these Japanese islands. Maybe we can surprise something. I don't know. They, they may have troop transports that are moving here. We could potentially attack. Now, certainly, they're probably escorting them. But you see, it's a lot of Japanese task forces out here, and we may go try to jump on one of these with an attack submarine. Uh, or we may take them up into the convoy lane, but... Uh, we have not had the best of luck with that so far. So the bullhead is in. Now, our troop transport went through what we call the Australian loop, uh, looper. 
Uh, it went through Austra this Australian loop, which pops out down here next turn. It says West Coast. Uh, I don't think we got it up here yet, right? Uh, Con Canberra and the Houston, right. They're, they're repairing here. Uh, we have not gotten this through the loop yet. Next turn, it will show up from the West Coast here, and then we will have another U.S. Infantry unit, I think we'll go put that near Port Moresby. Uh, since they bombed Moresby twice last time, I, you've got to almost think that th that's where they're coming. I think I would probably put them in like right here. Uh, let's see what the supply looks like out by Moresby. Okay, it, it drops very quickly, right? But we could maybe put that U.S. unit in lay. That might be something we could do. Uh, okay, okay, well, that's, you know, that looks like something we might do. We've also got Aussies that are going to be showing up, but they don't really have any transports. And so they will be on, you know, Australia until we can get tra transports for them. Uh, but we'll go look at all that when we get to Australia. We still have the Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, Maryland, California, all of these battleship uh, groups sitting here uh, waiting to, I mean, I say waiting, they are repairing. And then we have this tactical group, another bomber tactical group. Uh, we did split these divisions into three. No reason we can't move that back into town. And then I'll just put this one on the coast. Okay, uh, that all looks good. So I think that's, you know, the U.S. I mean, let's go up here. We'll look at Portland. We have a small core here, but until we have transports, it doesn't really matter. And we have an infantry corps large in Seattle. We don't need all that. We could split that into three as well. I would like to keep a division in some of these bigger towns, but we can take the other two divisions and get them out of here. Here's a destroyer squadron. And, uh, you know, I, I'm tempted to move them somewhere else, but I, I think I'll just put them like here this is the south pacific and that does buff up so i'm just going to put them there now you may say what is that that is considered a night move what does it mean well when you don't go more than like six hexes away from port and it's got full supply and full fuel something like that I, I i don't know the exact i've read it like a couple of times but the basic idea is is when you don't move far away from port it, it does what's considered a night move, meaning it's much harder to see, it's much harder to spot, and it's much harder to attack, all right? And so a night move, uh, Bob Seeger working on night moves out here near Seattle, Vancouver. Uh, we could go across here to Dutch Harbor, uh, where we're well uh, dug in here with the 108th Garrison. Yeah, it's kind of building up. I don't know. If I was the Japanese, I'd maybe just go take that. There's not much to that, although I guess it's hard. You know, you got to land and, and immediately attack. Um, Midway, that's, you know, building up. It's 8 of 10 now. We did have that on priority there for a while. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting some planes up there if we ever, you know, get more transports or have enough transports. Uh, infantry division, right. Infantry Division, this is 8 of 10. Hilo is still sitting there at 4, the Marine Corps Defense Garrison. Uh, 24th Division sitting here, almost getting up to full strength. Then we have all of these ships, and we're just not doing a whole lot with them right now. You know, because really there is nothing to do with them. If we're not going to go on the offensive, we may as well sit here with them and not uh, take any unnecessary risks. When we go to the air, it's still this Hawaiian Air Force group. It's 20 of 20. It's an air superiority group. Perfect. They'll probably sit here at Pearl Harbor the rest of the game. Uh, aye, aye, aye. Where do we go next? Well, usually we go down to beautiful New Zealand. Let's see how this air unit is doing. Is it building back up? Eh. Not really. <laughs> it's still at 5 of 20 strength. I would like to get that up and out somewhere, uh, but, you know, I don't want to do it uh, where it may get destroyed very easily. 5 of 20 strength. Uh, 7 of 10 here for the infantry. And down at Wellington, 6 of 10. We also have this infantry division that is sitting out here uh, in Tonga. Uh, you can say that if you want. Nuku Alofa! Is that like hello in uh, Tongese? I don't know. Um, but we have a unit sitting there. Okay, that's good. I like garrison units. Uh, in Suva, 
we have this uh, British unit, right? No, 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 no. That's a New Zealand unit as well. Sorry. Uh, it's now up to 8 of 10. We've got that on priority repairs. Uh, it is on active status, so that's great. Uh, we have two full carrier groups out here, two full battleship uh, divisions, and two full cruiser squadrons, and a destroyer squadron. And they're all just hanging out at Suva saying, come and get us, boys, if the Japanese want to scrap. Um, right. I mean, there's just nothing to do until this air unit. We really need air here. Oh, I did want to look. Can we move that air unit? It doesn't look like we can move that into Suva. Huh. Now, we did, what we were seeing there in San Diego is a United States anti-air and the u.s anti-air uh wouldn't go on suva right this is a uk holding or a new zealand holding um i guess it would be considered a no it says uk okay so if the uk gets more aa maybe we're gonna have to build one this turn uh for the uk let's go over to pago pago just because i like to say it u.s 7th defense battalion all right uh, now we can't move that anti-air out here either. So I'm I'm thinking if you get it, that anti-air was either at San Francisco or LA. I should have looked. We can go back and look in a minute. But um, I guess to move it out over water here, we would need transports to do that, which makes sense. I, it makes perfect. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. I guess I hadn't thought that all the way through. We will need transports to redeploy that anti-air. But I would like to get it on Pago, uh, Suva. New, uh, Nomaya, I would like to get that. Now let's go look at Nomaya. Can we, we've got an engineer unit out here. They are building up like crazy. Uh, they're very good in the rugged attack defend. This defense force is very nice. It's active status. We like that. It's, it's now does not need to prioritize out here. It's got 10 of 10, so we can turn that off. Uh, so yeah, that's no Maya. I would like to get anti-air on all three of these islands. Uh, when I play War in the Pacific AE, this I call this my Iron Curtain right here. Pago to Suva to no Maya. Very, very important that we hold each and every one of those. Uh, so we would like to try to get some AA here. Uh, but we've got this, you know, big carrier presence out here. Yorktown's got the special ability, the screening ability, which gives it a plus four for the anti-air. Uh, let's see if that shows up. It's up to a four here. Interesting. Okay, let's look at the Saratoga. Okay, so it adds, it doesn't show it to you here on the stat card, it seems to me. It shows it, you know, it's just an extra bonus above the base. Uh, okay, cool. Pago, uh, Suva. No Maya. We've looked at all those. Let's uh, go back here for just a second. Maybe we put this one on prioritized because it's sitting here at four. It really needs, and we could put this on active, I guess. Uh, yeah. Why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? Okay. So they, these are all active now, uh, I believe. Let's make sure that's true. Yeah, it's our, it's active, and the New Zealand group is active as well. Okay. Um. We've still got this destroyer squadron that's sitting out here protecting South uh, Pacific. That seems right to me. We will have that uh, our transport group coming through here from the West Coast next turn. Uh, yi, 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 the Australians have no dang transports. Uh, I think looking back now, starting in turn one or two, all you I think all you should do is build transports now just looking back. Uh, but I don't think the, Aust uh, the Australians really even had enough points to do so. Uh, this is a garrison. That's fine. Uh, it looks like the Houston can now move out. It's three of three. It has been repaired. It's got uh, three supply. It's built up to 56% on the effectiveness here. Now, how much oil? Yeah, it uses one oil. Um, where do I want to put this? Well, it's a great question. I'm going to bring it up to Townsville for now and put it in there at Townsville. Now, we may eventually move these units over to Moresby. Eh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, that, you know, they're prime bombing candidates, and so I really don't want to give the Japanese that target. Uh, we do have the Canberra out here. It's a two of three. When that gets repaired, we may move though that out to maybe Nomaya, someplace like that, or we may move those 
these up here are up to Nomaya. We shall see what's happening at Brisbane. Uh, we've got an infantry division here. Okay. Go back to that infantry division. As you can see, no escorts to embark, unfortunately. And we do have the 14th. Okay, so we brought this in, I think, for supply. But we're going to go put this in at Nomaya. Uh, we'll put that out here. Uh, we may actually... Do we still have a movement point for um, the Houston? No. Uh, once you move it like that and put it in port, you can't move it again. We do have the Colorado... A battleship out here but I think I'm just going to leave everything sort of in port the more I play this game you realize you just kind of leave things in port until you need them for something which I guess you know is histor <laughs> historically that's kind of what you would do too right but uh, you know you don't just have them floating around out here for no reason this sub we're either going to take up here and try to mess with the Japanese up here or we're going to take it into a convoy lane but that's why we've got it on the move uh, let's go to Moresby We've got uh, the Australian 112th sitting here at Moresby. It's at full steam, boys. It's ready to go. It says, come and get us. Uh, it's at active status. I like that. Uh, tactical group down to 17 of 20. Uh, effectiveness. This got hit a little bit last time. But as you can see, since it's a 1942 close support, uh, it's got 10 range. It's air combat 6, tactical bombing 6, strategic. We could actually maybe, you know, start thinking about getting out here and bombing something uh we'll see it's got it's got a range of 10 and so you know we've moved it over here we've got no more operation points this time i believe is that true yeah we've got no more so it's up in full support so if the japanese come back this time we'll be after it but next time we could maybe bomb something well i don't know we'll we'll contemplate that a little further uh up at darwin we've got uh this australian division excellent we've got the ramillies and the deroiter out here trying to protect darwin against any kind of japanese incursions and we do have this australian first raaf tactical group out here it is also on priority repairs now it's only 1941 for naval we've got it on full support in case the japanese get in this area uh, we already moved this sub that's the grayling uh, you see the japanese are there at dilly dilly it's not dilly dilly it's just dilly are you silly? Um, <laughs> oh boy, boy, oh boy. Uh, the dad jokes flowing there. Uh, Java, Borneo. I mean, this is all Japanese. Malaya, there's just nothing to do there. But let's get down in here and look at the situation in the Philippines. Now, they did bomb us twice at Davao. Uh, that oftentimes, I'm not telling you anything like I'm some kind of expert. Uh, this is common sense. That often precedes an invasion. Uh, that is the history of military uh, warfare. Uh, so we've been bombed here at DeVoe a couple of times last time. They may be bringing something here. I don't know. They're staging something big out here. We see task forces all about at Rabal. I'm thinking they're going to Moresby, but do we know that? No, we don't. Uh, Yap. I just like the name of that. I wanted to say Yap. Um, right. Do we attack here? Do we? I, sure. Let's try to destroy this unit. So we click on this unit if we hit shift and hover over this it'll bring in every other unit here we've got 10 to 1 should shatter should shatter let's right click it and adios oh it's just completely surrendered now i don't know what the ai is doing out here this just seems like a very odd way to play in the Philippines. I mean, I did like that they were super aggressive into Rangoon and whatnot, but we seem to have kind of put an end to that. Uh, I just think as a Japanese player, you've got enough stuff. You have got to take the Philippines. This would give us such a massive, uh, massive advantage staging. I mean, hell, we could attack them from the rear in China, which would be just devastating to them right i mean if we cut off their supply from the home islands into china uh, i don't know could we bag all all of these divisions well maybe not they would rail some of them out but uh we would really put them on the defensive or if we can't do that it's just a perfect launching point to get actually into china or i'm sorry japan and land here in the south and move up the home islands. I, I just think they've got to get more aggressive in trying to take the Philippines. But as we sit right now, we've got another division on the way. Uh, and we still got the southern and northern islands in good shape here. We've got 10 of 10 strength, 10 of 10 
9 of 10, 10 of 10, 10, you know, that all looks good. We've now destroyed their only unit that I think they had on the island. They were using this to resupply, um, you know, it's got 0 CV, 0 BB, so okay, okay, uh, come at me. But I, I, I really, I think they ought to be doing more there. Now, they could make the argument, maybe after next turn they will. We were using everything for Moresby, Milne Bay, down into Townsville even, or over to Nomaya. If they do that and they pull off that trick, then, uh, you know, I'll take all that back uh, because that's arguably, you know, that of equal importance let's put it that way but i just think they have enough stuff they've got to be coming hard after the philippines uh let's get up into a big old china um this all looks fine i'm kind of spaced here i've got to make i make sure all of these are in command um and they are they're in command from here and they're in command from here uh maybe i'll actually move him back i don't think we need him to be giving command to this unit because he's that's getting command from here uh the second war area this is the third war area um you know the the japanese have kind of just sat here quietly in some respects in hong kong now we do have this unit uh isolated should we go after it uh we get one to two i mean we're not even getting you know positive odds there so i think we wait now the problem is this right here does not look great to me uh and if we lose that unit you know cheng shaw they're bringing up three and fives you can see him bringing reinforcements up here uh very strongly and i think with this unit uh let's go here okay we could move our headquarters in here um i think that's all right i mean we've built a nice defensive line here we have this cavalry that has lots of move points that can get around i was thinking about even bringing the cavalry back down here and trying to attack this with that cavalry uh, but i think i'll leave it here for now um this is an infantry army do i move them out here let's put them down here and we'll have the headquarters just sit in Chongqing. that looks good to me uh this unit is the one that's only five of 30 so i gotta build that up before i move it around i'm just gonna let it sit there i, I mean i think we look okay here in china i you know we may have to pivot and come back down here and help uh this unit or these units if this gets destroyed or one of these two or this one gets destroyed you know cheng shaw gets exposed a little bit more we've got a ring around here i really would love to take this hex with like a really strong unit uh we're not quite to that point yet um okay i i did bring this chinese unit over here because why not uh they kind of guard a little bit against uh, if the Japanese get really moving this way now I don't even know yeah they cannot enter enter this is what I thought they can't enter this space uh and and jump a border right they got to stay in China but we've got them on this main road up to uh, Lijiang and eventually the Japanese may try to get up that way uh so this all looks fine um yeah I don't think there's really anything else to do I am worried about you know this unit uh, getting attacked from both sides uh, as you can see our odds if we were attacking it shows you it's going to get bad odds if attacked but it does have a one entrenchment so okay uh, we may start clapping back but not yet let's look at the supply out here yeah we got everybody back here in decent supply uh, the Japanese probably have okay supply I'm not sure where it would come out of uh, for these units they they may actually be out here with like threes or twos or ones um but i don't think there's anything else to do in china uh we will go build another chinese unit though this time uh here we're just dug in we're waiting double entrenchment uh we've got single entrenchment we've got you know not the best effectiveness but they didn't start with the best effectiveness let's turn on supply here yeah you know four three two that's not great but uh, I don't really see what else you can do. So we're just going to sit back here and kind of hold. Or are we? Should we move this forward? It's still an eight on this road. We've got more units now. 
why don't we actually do that? Why don't we go ahead and start moving down here just a little bit, and then I think I'll take one of these new units and start to come around this way. Yeah, I think that works. This is one of our new infantry divisions, and we'll move this one. What's this? That's the uh, four of ten. Okay, we're that needs to repair up a little bit. This one will move down here. Yeah, how about there? All right, so we're kind of moving back now. Uh, we do have the headquarters here sitting at a nine. Um, I just, I'm not sure. We've got these British units that are coming up here, but I'm not sure exactly yet what I'm going to do with them. Uh, we've got a division here at Madras and also, what is this, uh, Guntur, uh, Jaffna, Colombo. We've got all, you know, these massive British battleship and battle cruisers, the Prince of Wales and the Repulse. Uh, Prince of Wales uh, is repairing. Uh, Hermes, okay, you know, it's, it's carrier planes are at 10% still. Come on, let's go. Um, oh, what I was thinking about doing is actually really escorting this. We'll get this out of this lane. Do I do that though? Nah, maybe I won't. I'll leave it here. It's already got, these are those British troops, the East African Division, 11th. The Revenge is going to be bringing it wherever. Now, I think next turn we can get up here and get into port into Calcutta or up by here, uh, and we will drop these troops off up here, and uh, they will help our kind of India uh, adventures. Now, the next British unit out we may put in Headland, or we may put even, you know, over here in Darwin or even near Port Moresby. But I'm thinking about doing this with American troops, uh, just like the division we have going through the Australia loop right now. I don't think there's anything else to move out here. Um, this is all moved. And then next time when we drop those off, we will no longer, when they disembark, we will have those 10 back. So let's actually uh, transports back. Why don't we take this unit this is the UK 2nd Division. Let's move them up, get them in the port, and get them ready to go. The Burma headquarters... Ah, boy, oh boy. Well, let's take this one first, and then we'll come back next time and get the headquarters after that, and then we'll finally move this one. We're going to put maybe all of these into Burma uh, and try to stop the advances there and start pushing back the Japanese war machine. Let's go to the build. Uh, 122 for the UK this time. They could do an infantry division. I think I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do more transports. Let's look at their deploy. What do we got going? 70th division will be ready. Com comment. Uh, well, we've got three transports coming up. Uh, when we have four, we may be okay. We may be okay. Um, Okay, well, that changes my plans. Okay, 122, let's do another infantry division, 42 anti-tank. Um, do we want to maybe do some Marines? What's the comparison here? Marines, oh, they're more firearms, right? Yeah, the Marines do 634. They cost 130, though, and that's 534. The defense is higher for the Marines, too. Interesting. Okay. Mechanized Corps. Uh, that doesn't look too good, but it's only a 1940 group. Um, armor. Okay. Okay. Uh, for this time, I'm, I guess I'm just going to do an infantry, another infantry division. Next time, I may do some Marines. Uh, what if for the Navy? Is there anything we really need to build up for the uh, Brits? I mean, we could do more battle and carrier. I feel like they're already very strong with their battle groups. We could do like a light carrier group or a carrier group. That's 570. I say we could. We're going to have to build up for a while. You see reinforcement and upgrades. It took zero upkeep last time. Uh, the Brits are all the way built up. A patrol group. Uh, interesting. Okay. Three on the surface. All right. Well, it gives a little bit of uh, defense. All right. This time, let's do an infantry division. We'll do the 82nd West African. Then we're going to do a Lark Force. This we'll probably send over by Moresby, maybe. Uh, and maybe we'll do this next turn as well. So let's purchase that. All right. That'll take uh, two months. Okay. Uh, the U.S. sitting on 276. Well, we could do... Any, even more infantry divisions. We could do more transports. Uh, let's go look at the build queue. Uh, we've got 
let's see. We've got the uh, sub squad here, the Cerro, which will come along next time. Twenty seventh division and transports all get we get that all next time. Uh, we do not quite get the Cutlass that will be coming. Then North Carolina, more transports. Okay, so we'll have three transport groups floating. And then it's not till May to get the fourth. Then we got more Merch Marines. All right, America, what are you going to do? Um, let's see. We're sitting on 276. Carrier group. Light, well, light carriers aren't too bad here. I kind of like that. There are only a six naval air uh, carriers or ten, uh, but maybe some light carriers eventually. I can't do it right now, obviously. That's 400 days. Woo! Um, how long is a carrier group? 540 days. <clears throat> well, thank goodness we're getting a lot of them. Um, we could do another destroyer group, but it seems like we've got a lot of those. Air Force, uh, ground attack, 42. This costs 325. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, air superiority 300 okay um, strategic bombing now that costs a long time to build 60 well I guess they all do uh, six months I'm sorry let's do huh we can't do any we can't do any of these I guess we just keep cranking out divisions uh, during these turns, we can't do this. Maybe Marines. Let's get some Marines. I like that. All right, let's get some Marines. We'll purchase them. Cool. Uh, I guess we could get like a specialized Mountain Corps or something eventually. Now, I also want to do more Merch Marines. All right. Eventually, we're going to be sending out so much production. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I just want to make sure we have enough. So we'll purchase that. All right, that's probably good for this time. Uh, we'll do those two. We could start thinking about supply trucks, supply oilers, landing ships. We're not going to do that yet. We've got anti-air on the way. It's not ready yet, but we'll do merch marines. Do I do... I don't even think I can do transports now. 56. I think we'll be all right uh, for that. Let's go back to the build queue. See who else we can build for. Uh, the Soviets have, you know, more in the stockpile. We'll just keep doing, like, anti-tank. Oh, they don't have enough for that. Sorry. China, 220. Can we get an infantry army? We can. Wow. That's huge. Okay. 12th Army Group. Let's do it. 180. Excellent. We'll get that in two months. All right. The Chinese starting to spam units. That's what, that's what I'm looking to do. Australia. Uh, does that have enough? It's got 133. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we do need... Oh, uh, gosh. Huh. Huh. Well, we're bringing Americans like crazy. Do we spend money on transports for the Aussies? Let's go down here and look at Australia. Do they get any transports? No. And we've got divisions coming like crazy. So I, I, well, I say like crazy. There's two coming, but, you know, that sounds like crazy. Let's go ahead and do a support a transport. Okay, and they're building at 68, plus the U.S. is sending them a lot of stuff. We will get more divisions going, but I like that. Uh, oh, Canada, nope. India, 116. Can they get another infantry? Not quite, not quite, but uh, uh, they will, they will. Uh, wait a minute, that was Communist China. Communist China's got 116. India's only got 94, dang it, come on. Uh, but it only takes 78 to get an infantry division. Excellent. 78. Let's build it for India. Onwards, India. We may have to build another uh, headquarters here soon for India. New Zealand has 36. Yep, that's not going to be doing anything. Philippines, rebuilding. We're going to get even more. Uh, excellent. Okay, I think that does the build for this time. And I'm going to call that an episode. When we come back next time... We will resolve this turn, the March 29th turn, and we'll be into April 1942. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.